Hello YouTube, this is Largo64, back with uh, another episode in my series on the death penalty. Um, what I'm doing now is handling the various methods of the death penalty and why I think probably all of them are cruel punishment, if obviously not unusual. And this time we're dealing with the electric chair. Um, to start off, uh, the use of the electric chair as a method of execution in the U.S. came as a result of an accident. In 1881, a dentist in Buffalo, New York, named Dr. Alfred P. Southwick, uh, actually some of the sources call him Albert Southwick, Southwick witnessed the accidental electrocu electrocution of a man who touched a live electrical generator. Because the man died quickly and without showing any pain, Southwick assumed that electrocution would always be quick and painless. After a particularly gruesome hanging in New York in 1887, the state commissioned a committee to find a more humane way of executing condemned prisoners, as if killing anybody could ever be humane. Dr. Southwick suggested electrocution. Since he was a dentist and accustomed to dealing with people in chairs, he thought a chair would be the appropriate device. The first chair was actually built by Harold P. Brown, an employee of Thomas Edison. Edison, who was promoting electricity for homes using direct current, had Brown build their killing chair using the alternating current, AC, of his rival in the so-called War of Currents, George Westinghouse. Edison believed that if alternating current could be associated in the public mind as a means of killing people, that the public would opt for his direct current delivery system, even though it was less transport efficient and more costly to provide. The state of New York did adopt the electric chair in 1889 using alternating current. The first human being to put, be put to death in the electric chair was William Kemmler. On August 6, 1890, 119 years ago today, as it turns out, um, Kemmler was strapped into the device in New York's Auburn prison, and the first jolt of a, of a thousand volts was sent through his body for 17 seconds. It rendered him unconscious, but not dead. After taking some time with the generator to recharge, Kemmler was hit with a second jolt, this time of 2,000 volts. This succeeded in killing him. It also ruptured blood vessels under his skin, and witnesses said that his body caught fire. Some witnesses were sickened by the smell of burning flesh, but could not get out of the room. I'm going to read a few descriptions here of botched executions just since capital punishment was reinstated in 1976. April 22, 1983, in Alabama. The victim's name was John Evans. I'm going to, again, I'm calling the, um, the inmates who are being murdered by the state victims. After the first jolt of electricity, sparks and flames erupted from the electrode attached to his leg. The electrode then burst from the strap holding it in place and caught on fire. Smoke and sparks came out from under the hood. Two physicians entered the chamber and found a heartbeat. The electrode was reattached to his leg. More smoke and burning flesh. Again, doctors found a heartbeat. Ignoring the pleas of Evans' lawyer, a third jolt was applied. The execution took 14 minutes and left Evans' body charred and smoldering. December 12, 1984, Georgia, the victim, Alpha, Cotis, Alpha, I'm sorry, Alpha Otis Stevens. After the first jolt of electricity failed to kill him, Stevens struggled for eight minutes before a second charge finished the job. The first jolt took two minutes, and there was a six-minute pause so his body could cool before physicians could examine him and declare that another volt was needed, another jolt. During that six-minute interval, Stevens took 23 breaths. A Georgia prison official later said Stevens was just not a conductor of electricity. October 16, 1985, Indiana. William E. Vandeveer, the, vic the victim. He was still breathing after the first administration of 2,300 volts, and the current had to be applied three more times before he died. 
Vandiver's attorney, Herbert Schaps, witnessed the killing and said it was outrageous. The Department of Corrections admitted the execution did not go according to plan. That was a quote from them. On July 14, 1989, in Alabama, Horace F. Duncan's the victim. It took two jolts, nine minutes apart, to kill this mentally retarded inmate. The foul-up was caused by human error, faulty cable hookups. As a result, there was not enough current to cause death. Death was pronounced 19 minutes after the first jolt. May 4, 1990, in Florida, the victim, Jesse Joseph Taffaro. When the state replaced a natural sponge with a synthetic sponge in the headpiece of the execution apparatus, six-inch flames erupted and three jolts of power were required to stop Taffaro's breathing. Uh, that is only significant about the uh, unnatural sponge, the, the um, um, artificial sponge, because a natural sponge holds the water better and therefore provides a better con conducting of electricity into the skull. October 17, 1990, in Virginia, Wilbert Lee Evans, the victim. During the electrocution, blood spewed from the right side of the mask on Evans' face, drenching Evans' shirt with blood. Evans continued to moan after the first jolt of electricity was applied. Now, this would seem to indicate that he was not rendered unconscious by that electricity and was in great pain. The autopsy concluded that blood resulted from high blood pressure brought on by the electrocution. High blood pressure indeed, enough to break the blood vessels. March 25, 1997, Florida, the victim, Pedro Medina. With the first jolt of electricity, blue and orange flames sparked from the mask covering Medina's face. Flames up to a foot long shot out from the right side of Medina's head for six to ten seconds. The execution chamber clouded with smoke, and the smell of burnt flesh filled the witness room. July 8, 1999, Florida, Alan Lee Davis, otherwise known as Tiny Davis, uh, w was the victim. When hit with 2,300 volts, blood poured from Davis's mouth. The blood poured onto the collar of his white shirt and oozed onto his chest. By the time he was pronounced dead, the stain on Davis's chest had grown to the size of a dinner plate and seeped through the buckle holes on the leather chest, chest strap holding him to the chair. Davis was the first inmate to be executed in Florida's new electric chair. Well, these are just a few of the botched executions. I'll be repeating stories of other botched executions of other types in other, in other videos. Um, this one, just to give you an idea of what actually goes on in an electrocution. Um, it's obvious that it's cruel. When, if you remember watching even in old films, people were talking about, oh no, they're going to get the chair. The idea of the electric chair is so horrifying. You would think that it would uh, th that if the the proponents of capital punishment were correct, that people anticipating the electric chair would be um, deterred from committing capital crimes. But capital punishment has never been a deterrent to capital crime. I'll get into that more in another video. Thank you.